Bustleton Shelter. How the bloody hell are they? Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the first live Shelter footy cast from Bustleton Shelter, Shelter Brewing Co. Myself, Will Schofield, Mark Reddings. Welcome, Skeeter. Now, I might address something first. That's not your beer on the table. That's not your beer. I've had a beer, but that's not my beer, no. What are you drinking this evening, I'm Mark? Actually at, at, at Shelter Brewery, our, major, our only sponsor, our major sponsor, our friends, our family who make beer... What are you drinking what? at our first live show? Just don't no, no, tell the people what we what, well, we, what are we shut drinking? up for ten seconds. I'll tell you what I'm drinking. I'm drinking a shelter Chardonnay or Sav Blanc. So a, a shelter, shelter Chardonnay. Chardonnay. That's new on the market, by the way. That'll be the next big thing in this part of the world. Take my word. You are an absolute <laughs> numpty in your own words. Um, I think I'm a little bit loud, Jane. I've got a little uh, reverb happening here, mate. Now, uh, Shelter Footy Cast live from Shelter Brewery. Thank you very much for you all coming down. We do appreciate it. We're going to do our very best to give you our West Coast and Fremantle previews. Now, Mark and I both worked that game uh, at Lathlane Park on the weekend. Six quarters. And if you listened to that, uh, you would have realised that neither of us had much of an idea what was fucking going on. So we're going to give you our expert opinion on uh, the year coming up, 2024. Uh, a few things to get through first. So that was sort of the Southern River Band coming out of Thornley Skeeter, as we usually do. Has anyone, is anyone here that doesn't know what this is, the Shelter Footy Cast? Is anyone here going, I know your old man is. He's come over from Germany. Just big, big welcome to the man from Germany, ladies and gentlemen. He is, he is flown all the way to see Mark Redding's dribble shit about the West Coast Eagles. Tell you what, sir, you're going to want a refund, I reckon. You're more than welcome if I knew some German. In fact, in about three hours, I might know some German because uh, the shelters get to that point. But uh, welcome to you. And I've got to say, Sco, in all seriousness, if I get this many people to my funeral, I reckon I've done well. Because this is a... Vi I thought we might have, in all sincerity, it's very well promoted, but I thought we might have maybe two tables and then a couple of... Uh, just a couple of wanderers just uh, flying upstairs and thinking, what's going yes. on up here? Yeah, you are used to the wanderers. Uh, now, Skeeter goes to me up here, a little bit rattled. He goes... Is this, is this meant to be this many people here? Is there meant to be this many people here? After I've had a bit of an update from his wife, Victoria. Big round of applause for Mark's wife, Victoria. Yes, punching well above, I know. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. You beat me to the punch there, Skeeter. Now, uh, Victoria informs me that Skeeter's had a busy day. Um, Skeeter's, Skeeter's spent the best part of four hours sweeping his front veranda which may not sound remarkable, I know, but it was apparently the first time in his life that he has uh, volunteered to sweep the veranda. It's true. And I can tell you now, gentlemen, if you are uh, a bit like me and not uh, manually handed, gifted, uh, the best bet is to get out in the garden for half an hour. Even if you do nothing, just walk around and listen to sport or a podcast like this. It just takes the heat. I went inside. My wife came up to me. Normally every day I say to Victoria, it's very true, I say to Victoria, I love you. She replies, I like you. Um, <laughs> that is a true story. You can ask her tonight. She's sitting over there. But today she came up and gave me a hug and said, did you do the veranda? I said, bloody oath I didn't. She said, thank you, and then walked off. Congratulations, Skeeter. Well done, mate. Very good. Now, uh, a few things to get through here. So pretty much everyone in the room knows this. Shelter footy cast across socials. You've heard this on the podcast. Footycast at shelterbrewing.com.au is our email address if you want to send in your questions. Now... People will be listening to this at home. Bad luck. You missed out on the live show. You should have been here. Right? Correct? Am I right? Now, if you would like to contribute to the show today, tonight, live from Shelter, you can see some QR codes on the table. They're on the white pieces of paper. If you... Uh, Skate, do you want to run the people through how you use a QR code? Now you, you know, uh, William, that I don't know how this all works. And you know that my ability... On, and don't you blokes, older blokes, laugh. Half of you pricks don't got no idea either. Let's be honest. Some of the social media skills are required for this show. I've got no, I've never listened to a podcast, not even ours. And it ain't about to start by telling people how to work a, a Q code. <laughs> <laughs> to work a Q code, okay. So to get the Q codes working on the tables... Take the photo, click on the link. You can contribute live to the podcast. You can send in your questions. Nick, our wonderful producer, will be sending over your questions live to the hot seat over here. Only the very best will make it on. Uh, we have 
uh, some select free beers uh, being poured. So our wonderful server, Leanne, is at the back today. Hi, Leanne. How are you going? Everyone say hi, Leanne. Hi, Leanne. So if you would like a beer this evening, you don't need to get up. Leanne will come and serve you today. So just chuck your hand up. Leanne, come and see you. Uh, and she'll be doing a bit of serving. Uh, I believe, actually, while I'm on the shelter side of things, we've got a lot of shelter staff members in the house. Matty Kipps, I see. Uh, hello, Matty, welcome. I, I think we do have a, like a new-ish member. Maybe someone who needs to reintroduce themselves to the people. Uh, everyone, a big round of applause for Jason Lane is in the house. Congrats, he's a new, new member of shelter. Well done. Congratulations. Welcome to the team, mate. Yes, very good. Uh, in-house joke there, Skater. Well, speaking of in-house jokes, uh, I did see, when I was just having a bite to eat before, uh, the pilot who took us up for a flight a few months ago, maybe 12 months ago. Zeb, the owner of Shelter, yes. Is he? Is yeah, he owns this. He actually owns this oh, place. Yeah, that's how much... He's right here. Uh, yeah, yep. just he, just the sight of him scared the shit out of me because he took us up in that plane, which is no bigger than one of these little tables, and it was a frightening experience. So uh, he tells me he's got a new plane that does backflips. Would you like to go up in it tomorrow? Well, not while he's trying to text someone while he's up in the air, which he was trying to do when I was in there. That wasn't really good for my heart. But thank you very much. Uh, very good. So if you'd like to join in the program, you can do this live. Uh, jump on the QR code. Send them to us. If we're dribbling too much shit, like we probably are right now. Let us know. You can send in the questions. They'll come in right here. Uh, another big... Uh, this is a big announcement, Skeeter. And I know you don't know what's going on here, but I'd like to tell you as well. Uh, our good friends at TASA, Travel and Sports Australia, they are giving away uh, two tickets on the plane with the West Coast Eagles to away games this year, as well as two tickets to the game uh, in pretty much every one of West Coast Eagles away games. Right here on the shelter footy car, Skeeter. Well, that's big. So you get the excitement, the anticipation of going over with the Eagles when they play Collingwood, and then you jump on the plane when they've been beaten by 10 goals and think, what the hell am I doing on this plane? No, I'm joking. I'm only joking. Skeeter goes, wow. <laughs> I was, I was hang on, you picked them to finish lower than last year. And that was last. Hang on. We, 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 it's meant to be, we're meant to sort of tease what we think about each team. This is a preview show, Skeeter. Yeah, okay. Now, I was talking to some lads before. They asked... Who does Mark Reddings go for? Who, who, who do you support? I, I couldn't answer them. No, because because oh, I've been doing it for a long time. Oh, and, and we you're impartial, well, are you? I am you're pretty impartial because I've, yeah, I'm telling oh, you, yeah. the team that I would most like to win a grand final hasn't won a flag since 1977. The Perth Footy Club in the oh, Waffle, God. we've been useless for a long time. Nothing has changed uh, in my memory. So... That's where my heart lies with who, Perth. Who, who is your who, AFL team? Don't have one. Or who will have a multi on, possibly? <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you name one? Like, who, no, I, I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't I'd, love, I'd love Fremantle to go well. I loved it when you guys won. Um, yeah, so in that sense, no, I've, I didn't grow up in the media. We, and you ask any of the guys, they're not as passionate as, as, as these folks, which is fair enough. Because Matty Pavlich loves the Dockers. Like, he absolutely loves the Freo Dockers. And hates West Coast? Yeah, correct. Okay, but you're not the same. You actually love Freo. I do. I like the Freo Dockers. So we're going to get into that in a little bit. So Tassa's giveaway, Travel and Sports Australia, giving this away. So we're doing our first one today on today's show, tonight's show. You've got to listen along. Now, you lovely people who are in the crowd are listening along. We give a code word away. Once you get the code word, you chuck it on a website, put your details in, you go in the running to win two return airfares to Melbourne, Adelaide, Sydney, wherever West Coast are playing, on the plane with the team, two tickets to the game. Does that sound all right? Sound all right? Good trip. Good, good, good. So listen out for the code word, please. Uh, now, we've, we've, uh, we've welcomed Jason Lane, the new employee. Welcome, Jason. Uh, beers with Leanne, you know that. Chuck your hand up. You would like a beer as we go on. Beers are mandatory uh, here at the Shelter Footy Cast. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they go better with skate night, talking crap up here. A big welcome to the lads from the Offshore Cup. Are they still up here? Oh, my, my lads here, the Offshore Cup boys. Big round of applause. Hello, boys. What's the Offshore Cup? Now, Skeeter, I was going to ask you the same question, but... The lads here are putting their own league together. They've got the footies down here. That's not, what, that's not what the offshore cup is. But these boys playing a league down here. Sheltered boys look after them. Big supporters of the footy cars. You actually met a lot of them last year when we did a live show down here. Do I really? Do you remember that? I don't remember much about the last 12 months ago, to be brutally honest with you. So, no, I do apologise. But the offshore boys, uh, welcome to them. Who would like to hear some football chat? 
Yes, okay, very good. Let's get into it. Will Scoville, Mark Reading, Shell Footy Cast. Sting would usually come in there. Not going to be played. Bye bye, Angus Brayshaw. He's done and dusted. You spoke to uh, uh, Hamish, our good friend here at Back Chat and Shelter Footy Cast, uh, about this this morning. But um, how did Hamish speak about Angus and how he was going? I wasn't there, obviously. It's a, it's a disappointing outcome in the end, isn't it? Yeah, I think when he's you know he's given so much to the footy club, and, and it's like anyone, it's he's been his workplace, it's been his passion, and to get the news from the medical uh, fraternity a week or two ago, uh, look, we knew after the Braden Maynard incident there were some concerns about him he's had, but that's one of, of many concussions he's had. So he's finished up. Uh, I think Melbourne will try and keep him involved in the, in the, the short term because he's just got that terrific team sort of culture about him and the players love him so hopefully he keeps himself involved uh, Hamish seemed to think that he's probably going to maybe slip overseas or go away for a bit because there's nothing worse in his situation than to, to sit back in the next month or so and watch your, your teammates go around and you're sitting there either at the ground or at home on your TV so I think he'll try and get away from it but there's a, there's a spot for him but as most of you know as well uh, Angus's partner is Danny Frawley's daughter, and, yep. and we know the significance of, of Danny with CTN and, and how that ended. So I, I think it was a sensible move in terms of what's going to come in the rest of his life, as much as it hurts now. Uh, he's got what you have, and no one else has in this room, to my knowledge, in terms good look, of... Good looks. Handsome. No, I was going to say that. Uh, the AFL Premiership medallion, uh, uh, Wilbur. Yes. That's what I'm about to talk... And that's what he's got. He's got it in 2021... He's got that. He hasn't got the career that he would like in terms of the longevity, but he's got a, a fantastic reputation. His record speaks for itself, and uh, I think the family themselves, they're just a, a terrific bunch of uh, young men, and, of course, the mum and dad, uh, outstanding as well. So we, we wish Angus all the very best in his uh, afterlife of footy. A lot of WA connections as well with the Brayshaw family. Now, um, again, I'm stealing some questions here, but chatting to some fans beforehand, Skeeter, one question was asked of me, which I think, <clears throat> excuse me, very relevant to where we are right now. What is going on with round zero? Like, how how on earth right now, uh, at 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 one week before the season start, are we loading up for round zero? We're loading up for round zero because the NRL is currently doing what we wish we were doing. And that's being in Las Vegas, <laughs> preparing to uh, watch some uh, football, their code of football. So that's, in essence, what the AFL's done. They've realised that uh, like four clubs have gone over there. They're trying to obviously gather a new market, primarily gambling. But what the AFL's hoping to do is pinch a bit of the, the eyeballs from the northern market. So that's why the early start for the northern clubs. This, and this is a, few, uh, it's a pure money play. So, so From both sides, yeah. Well, so last year we had uh, a buy. This weekend coming up, um, but, you know, not this weekend, the following, which is round zero, it was a buy. It was a buy between the pre-season and round one. I went to Bali and I was perfect. I got away, five days away. This year, I may or may not be going back to Bali and I'm missing out on quite a bit of work, Skeeter, which you and I both know. Um, yep, the comes cash, in handy. The, the cashies uh, come off the spreadsheet. I, I, I personally... I understand it. The AFL uh, uh, adding another round to their commercial roster, basically, right? So um, I was over for Fox Footy uh, yesterday. The AFL came out, Andrew Dillon, Laura Kane, uh, the umpiring department, the, the rules committee, everyone spoke to us. And realistically, they're trying to grow the game. And so if you break it down, all this gives is another week and probably another week before that of preparation, of news time, of air time of telecasts, of broadcasts, of people watching AFL, I don't actually think it has much to do with the NRL. I, I, I understand that they've come out and said that, but I don't think that has a lot to do with it. Bottom line is, I mean, at least what they had done is they've reduced the number of pre-season matches because, I don't know about you, but one is enough. One is enough. Let's, let's get into the footy. If you're going to have a break, have it mid-year. Get the footy started. Get it moving. And don't play these Mickey Mouse pre-season games. I know you need to have a hit out, but Scoey, let's not turn it in. And they've pulled it right back, which I like. I, I was, when I was first drafted, I was playing in four, four games in the pre-season. There was the proper Wizard Cup. There was the Ansett Cup. There was the... Benson and Hedges Cup, probably. Yeah, Benson and Hedges <laughs> Cup. Skeeter. <laughs> like... I played in a I played in a preseason cup grand final at Adelaide Oval against Adelaide. We knew at the time we were up for uh, a pretty big cash outlay from the AFL if we won. So we we wanted to win, but like we wanted to play and win, and we got smacked by Adelaide. Uh, but 
I, I kind of disagree with you. I, I don't. I think maybe players need more than one round. Like we'll we'll see Freo on West Coast last week, which we watched, which was which was subpar. That that wasn't AFL standard. That that was players seeing a few different uh, jumpers running around, and yeah, it was a it was a it was a level up from training, but it wasn't AFL standard. Let me ask you this though, just to raise your hands here: Would you rather see a Scully said say four pre-season matches or one? Short, sharp, hit at two maximum, and play the season slightly longer. With matches that meant something. Would you like four? Who wants on, four on. preseason before, matches? Hey, hey, before you put your hand up, just wait. Just wait. That means it started three weeks ago. It's not four weeks from now. It's three weeks ago when each and every one of you was gagging for some football. There was real football being played three weeks ago. It's not real footy, Scully. No one cares about the result. Okay, hands up if you're on skate side. Oh, it's a very Okay, it's a half up. Who's on Scoey's side? We don't care. We, we, oh no, we want more. We want more. No, they want more. Hang oh. on, this bloke put his hand up three times. <laughs> <laughs> he put both his hands up both times. Uh, well, I don't know who wins there, but uh, Skeet, I... Anyway, we're getting closer to the, the opening round or round zero, and we can't wait. And I reckon the season, pre-season, I think in many ways you talk about Angus Brayshaw and what's happened there. Uh, the story out of the last 24 hours with the AFL Tribunal, and I will talk about it, but that's that's with concussion. That That's the story of the year in waiting. So I know we've spoken about it this morning. So to give you a bit of a, I guess, a fresh view, like I said, I was over in Melbourne for the Fox footy. Uh, they got all their talent together, um, commentators, ex-footballers, and, and, and they rolled a bunch of people through, uh, champion data, AFL. And uh, Laura Kane was there, um, new appointment at the AFL. She was incredibly impressive. She spoke about the tribunal, the rule changes and, and the direction that the AFL are trying to take. And, and probably one thing that I took out of it, um, you know, she spoke uh, about a, a range of things, but one major thing I took it out of it was that they're really concerned about players getting hurt. They want players to get hurt less. And that, that was pretty much a direct quote of, of, of those words. Um, having... Play the game. Um, there's people in here that have played the game, whether it be AFL level or not. Were you concussed many times in all seriousness? Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, yep. And, um, and you're not going to know now. Did, did you feel at the time that you were fit to play in the next week, or did you? you didn't no, I think was. About it? I was never. I was never a week later thinking oh, I can't play. Um, but the stopping from players from getting hurt. I, I, I really struggle to have that as a directive. I think it's a physical contact game and, and we've got to change because otherwise there'll be no money left in the game. There's litigation. Players need to be protected. understand that. But if I... There's, there's a rule that's come in. You can't um, push off for space as a forward or backman off the ball. So there was a few incidents last year where a forward or a backman will, you know, put a really hard hit in and from experience happens... 20 times a game, forward to backman usually, trying to get that space. Basically, Laura at the AFL, and this isn't just her speaking, this is what their directive is, is if the player is hurt in that instant, they're going to be reported. Um, but the thing that wasn't said was in the exact same action, if you're not hurt, there's no report, there's no incident. So it's, it's outcome over the action. Mm. And I don't know if that changes anything in the AFL. They, they want to stop players getting hurt, that's fine. I don't know anything that's going to stop that really, to stop the the action. No, it's like, like it's the no outcome's just nothing. But the outcome is like when you drive through. If someone drives through a red light and you don't hit anyone, obviously there's a lesser penalty than if you hit someone. Right. So the AFL, the outcome of the Mark Keane incident, if he wasn't concussed, yes, what would be the penalty? I would use the example of. Uh, well, yeah, see, that's the thing. If he wasn't concussed, nothing. If Sam Pell Beber did what he did and... and um, the, yeah, Mark Keane. Yeah, Mark Keane not touched, nothing happens. No. Which, that doesn't make any sense to me. No, I agree. But, look, I feel a bit sorry. I know that we're going in that direction. But Sam Pell Pepper, we've seen incidents last year and, and previous. I know that's history, but we've seen incidents where players have done very similar actions and received lesser time. So all I'm saying for Frio fans, West Coast fans... Don't Ooh, get to... Look out. Yeah, look out. And it's going to just use that case as a precedent. And let me just stop you on one thing. You did say the biggest thing that you took out of the Fox meeting was the Laura Kane, the concussion. The biggest thing that you told me downstairs that you got out of the meeting was that you had this, never... This would be good. You had never received any clothes at all from Fox in the last two years. You had to buy your own clothes. Alex had to go out and source them from Kmart and Worths and all that other joints. And, and so where? <laughs> Worths. <laughs> 
that what you call Woolworths? <laughs> no, that's shorthand for Woolworths. There's, there's a few people here at Woolworths going back to the uh, the eighties and nineties. Look at the boys. <laughs> boys know what it is. Anyway, it's a it's a cheap brand, Sco. Not that you are cheap, but let me say this: you got just about you got wet between the armpits no. when you found out that you were going to get some new threads from Fox. So that's what got you excited this evening. Mate, we can't all roll around in our Julius Marlowe's, right? Our jackets. You've seen the podcast, right? Skeeter rolling in. He wears his jacket. I roll down in my pajamas and sometimes shoes. Yeah, that's correct. We've got an office now. I <laughs> know we're going places. Well, you are very good. Uh, look, I think if it was to finish up on this, if it was Sam Pepper or if it was Mark Reddings, an incident like that, trouble was four weeks. Yep. Now we're going to make an example of our the first person that hit ahead. They're, they're they're extremely worried about being litigated against by the players. Can I just say this in brief? If Angus Brayshaw hadn't retired a week ago. Do you think this uh, incident or this theme would have been as strong? Or do you think it was always coming in? No, nah, I think it had no impact. I think they were, they were, they were for use of a better word, head hunting, Skeeter. Thank you very much. Righto. You like that? Very good. Yeah, Ooh. thank you very much. Uh, I'll be here all night. Now, let's get into the big stuff. The West Coast Eagles and the Fremantle Dockers. We've been previewing teams throughout the podcast over the last couple of weeks, but we've left the Freo and the West Coast teams for right now down here. Can we get a bit of a show of hand? What's the room in here? I know there's a Bulldogs fan right here, and there's a Collingwood fan over somewhere in a polo. Very good. Can we get a show of a hand? Is there a bit of a cheer? Who's going for the Eagles this year? Yeah. Who's going for the Dockers this year? Yeah. Wow, we. Well, that's one. You know, we do quite a few sportsmen's nights, I'm going to be honest, up in the, the, the city. Is that right? West Coast get a lot of love. I think that Fremantle's 70 to 30 probably in that little uh, small survey of uh, supporters. We are south of the river. Of course, very south. Yes, is that right? <laughs> Although I drove Is that where the compass is? You, you very flew, south. You flew in. I uh, just drove in very in a humble Kia. But there you go. That is right. Well, your wife drove you here. You didn't drive, but... Thank you very much. <laughs> now, <laughs> that's a true fact. Now, let's get into the West Coast Eagles. So we, we, we'll leave the best for last today. Sound good? We'll go to the Dockers second. Right, West Coast Eagles, season preview, 2023 record, 3 and 20. 53% on the uh, percentage, Richter. That's about as shit as it gets. Now, 14 defeats by more than 40 points. Four times last year, one goal kicker kicked more of a score than the entire West Coast Eagles. Uh, can you name them? Charlie Curno was one. Can I name them? That Tyler, is the question. Taylor Walker, no? Taylor Walker was one. Uh, someone at Sydney did it. What, Charlie Kerno? Uh, one of the Sydney players did it, I think. Was Charlie Kerno? Charlie Kerno was one. Did, you, did, you did I say him first? Oh, you probably did. Charlie Kerno. I do switch Taylor up. Walker. People will be listening to the podcast. Any, 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 Charlie Cameron? Charlie Cameron? I don't know about Charlie Cameron. I don't think Charlie Cameron. At Brizzy, when Brizzy... Gunston. Gunston. Gunston, yes. And was it was it Nick Larkey? Did someone say North? Was it Nick Larkey? Might have been Jack Gunston, my man. It was Jack Gunston. Very good. That is a stupid. Uh, in fact, just because of that, you know, grab yourself a. Uh, ah, bang! Very nice good. Catch Look at this. Seat, Skeeter slinging out hats. Way. Well done to Cam Green today, getting the century over there in the Basin Reserve. Is that what he did? Yeah, the Bison played pretty well. Your man. Yes. But uh, well, he went nine for two ninety or thereabouts. Uh, day one Test match. And Cameron Green made a hundred. Made a ton last over. His last... First, first no, that's not his first ton, but he's. Uh, he played beautifully, and I said him and the Bison got together, and just the West Aussie pair just steered us out of a bit of a bit of a pickle with the New Zealanders. Uh, they were gathering around like sheep, just ready to just to um, cause some issues for our tail end, so to speak. So the New Zealanders causing some troubles for our tail ends. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, the ins for West Coast. Uh, Look, they've, they've had some good ins. I think they recruited pretty well. Tyler Brockman's a very, very uh, good in for that football club, although I believe he's struggling with a knee injury, and I don't know how serious that one is. Matt Flynn, we know, has done a hamstring tendon. He did that in a captain's run, and let me tell you, a captain's run is a uh, jog at best. It's a gear three out of ten. You... The ruck bag issue. Now, I'm not sure we've discussed it, but for the folk here... There's, there's no, mate, there's... The, the ruck bag was mentioned as being part of how he injured himself. Can you even fathom how that plays out? Spoken to someone who's spoken to Matt, and basically, for those of you who are here, your hamstring, you see under the table? You see under the table? The hamstring tendon runs through here. It runs around the front of your knee and it attaches at the front right here. He's torn the tendon off the front of his knee, which apparently is extremely rare. Mm. Uh, and, but he'll be out for 
minimum of 12 weeks, I think. So, like, that was a, that was a really astute pickup. They were struggling in the ruck. Uh, they had Bailey Williams play there last year, who was outstanding, I thought, to be, to be frank. Uh, Matt Flynn was going to be the ruckman. He won't anymore. Clay Hall comes in. Really good pickup. Injured. He's from down south, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, down south boys. Um, but injured as well. Injured. Friendly fire. Not long, not long term, but it's just a, it's just a c- accumulation scale. And yeah, it's it's not getting any better. I like Locke Rawlinson. He was picked up in the rookie draft uh, at the start there. He looks good. We saw him on the weekend. Uh, they took a couple of reads uh, to start the draft in Harley. We know about Harley, right? Do you want us to break down Harley's every touch he had on the weekend? We're not going to do that. Uh, we'll get back to him uh, and Archer Reed as well. And uh, I, I enjoyed Cohen Livingston's game. Maybe he can step up and be a, a Matt Flynn type. He's a young type. He's from Perth. You've yeah, seen him play. played Colts footy last year. Missed the grand final because of injury. But I think he uh, averaged something like 16 or 18 disposals a game. Kicked 20 goals for the years. He's agile. He's the nephew of uh, Chance Bateman. And look, he showed enough at the weekend that he can compete. I don't think they're going to you know, find a, a Max Gorn or a, a, an elite ruckman with the Bailey Williams. He, he competes hard, did really well last year. They just want someone to, to try and compete in the ruck, which they are desperate now that uh, Flynn's been sidelined. We'll break it down a little bit more, but they lose a fair bit of experience. Shannon Hearn, Nick Nananui, Luke Shuey, we know, out the door. Uh, delisted Luke Foley, which I found a little interesting, but he's gone. Greg Clark's gone. Xavier O'Neill gone. Samo Petrovsky seaton a top 10 draft pick uh, after relocating to West Coast. He's gone as well. So a fair bit out the door, experience-wise. To start with it, and this is why... Uh, last year, I was quite bullish on the West Coast Eagles. Very I, bullish. I, th- <laughs> I thought I'd seen enough. I thought I'd seen real improvement. I thought I'd seen that they'd really improved the way they were playing and the way they were bringing the ball through the corridor and taking it on. And said they'd play finals, and if they didn't, uh, sorry, I said they play finals, let alone if they won the wooden spoon, I'd run naked around Optus Stadium. Now, I still owe you a naked lap around Optus Stadium. Not me. I w- well, <laughs> well, just the, the, the people of Perth, not me. I, mean, I was thinking maybe I could trade a naked lap around Optus Stadium for a, maybe a run down the, the jetty a little later on. I've done that already. I, I've done that already. <laughs> naked? So I, no, I've done that with the... Uh, with the, the shell to Speedos, I've been told by my wife and other friends it wasn't a good look, so we're going to put that on the shelf, but continue. You didn't do the naked lap, so what? when's that going to happen? And more importantly, getting back to the Eagles, and you forgot to mention Harry Edwards, by the way, has also gone down with... The, well, no, the so we haven't talked about the injuries. So well, why I'm not bullish this year is I think they're uh, in, in really poor shape from a list perspective. They lose Matt Flynn, who, who really changed their way their list was looking. Bailey Williams goes forward. It creates more depth in the forward line. Uh you know, Tim Kelly was out for a while with a hammy. He looks to be okay. Liam Ryan's out of the team right now. Uh, Jai Cully's still coming back from that knee injury last year. Jack Darling's had a hammy. So when that happened, it was a two-week hammy apparently. But shock, he's out for the regular three to four weeks, which every hamstring in the history of the world uh, is. Ruben Jimby was concussed last week. He'll miss this week. Oscar Allen was sent for scans uh, on his knee. Did we hear that? I don't know what the fuck's going on down there, if I'm really honest. Mate, they're, they're Oscar Allen, Elijah Hewitt is going to be a superstar. Injured. Dom Sheed, from the boundary. Injured. They, they have... that. Harry Edwards, uh, who has had an incredible preseason, has broken his finger. Injured. Jeremy McGovern's been out with an inductor. These players are first 18 players. I, I don't see how they are competitive with this list that they have right now. I don't think their list is good enough. I wish I could argue with this, Goey, uh, and what we saw on Saturday. And I don't look, look you, you never judge your entire season on one practice match, but it's about having A, the, the quality in the list, but also the availability. And both at this stage are question, questionable for the Eagles. And uh, at the end of the day, they, you know, they have to get, if not winning uh, six to eight matches, they have to try and reduce the margin for deficit that sounds defeatist but some of the floggings last year that that's just not acceptable for for coaches for for anyone at the footy club and and that's that's what confronts them now can they bridge the gap between getting belted and being ultra competitive and and winning obviously more matches i agree mate um let's have a look at how they're going to play this year skater that's their ins and outs and their injuries um their back line, their midfield, their forward line. Their back line, they have some strength. They have Barras, they have McGovern. 
Uh, I think Jaden Hunt will play back more from what we saw on the weekend. He, he looked to be a standalone halfback flanker. Uh, Brady Hoff, uh, down south boy, uh, he looks good. Put he's, on some weight. He's put on... I've been told he's put somewhere between 10 and 15 kilos on before, before, since he got to the footy club, which is very similar profile to me. And me, the last uh, 18 months. Right between us <laughs> 18 before. months. As I 18, say, 18 days. <laughs> being in a good paddock, I think you could tie the last uh, energy. As Victoria nods away over She's about to right? sleep, by the way, because yeah. this, this footy talk doesn't quite, uh, you know, it's not like going to... What? <laughs> Going to, go to the Eiffel Tower or somewhere exciting. <laughs> Perfect, great. <laughs> we'll see you in Paris. Now, uh, I think Hoff um, is a similar profile to you, yes, but so when I got to the footy club, I was 77 kilos, ring and wet, uh, skinny as. Within three years, I was up to about 92 kilos, so that's similar to what he's done. Uh, I really like the look of him. I, first time I saw him on the field, makes the right decisions, calm, hard, tough. All of that. So I think if we can be positive, I think that's a real positive. Speaking of backs, no, I might have missed this, but Rep Basso, where, where have you heard? Where, where, where is he at? Obviously, I haven't, not, I haven't seen him. Has anyone, not, anyone that, heard what? No, nah, update me. Mark Bell was, <laughs> had an injury of some sort, I'm guessing, but I haven't heard whether it's a long term or, or what. But he's, he's a young bloke. We know he's got talent. He's very yeah. slight as well in terms of frame. Yeah, I, but I think that they really they back rate his him. talent in mm. and rate him highly. Um, Harley Reid, do we like him in the back line? Do we like him in the back line? Do you like him in the back line? You know, that's the first time I've seen him live. And oh, he started in the middle, most quarters, played a bit down back. I, I wonder if this is just the Eagles, early stages of his career. I don't know anyone, any other kid that's been, you know, we the media and obviously the West has done a, a fairly comprehensive uh, background on him. I don't think anyone has been able, able to put a number of times that his name's been mentioned for, a, albeit number one draft pick. So... I just hope he can get some footy under his belt. I think the Eagles will try and put him in cotton wool as much as they can. He got cramp late in the game. Uh, he's, he's forward to centre, or mid forward to centre, once he gets established, I think. So I, I wonder if they're just trying to protect him as much as possible early doors. I think the West coverage has got to the point where you need to call it out. I saw Summers step down from his position. Whether or not that's gone on, don't know. But I think what they've done with Harley Reid in the West and the, and the, I think, pressure they're applying to him, and clearly it's a calculated decision. They're putting ridiculous stories out to put him on the back page. I, I think that's, look, disgrace is a, is a harsh word, but I think the the line they've taken with that, I think it's dangerous for an 18-year-old, number one draft pick. I understand there's a lot of coverage around him, but there's more stuff he can put on the back page other than Harley Reid. So I won't go on about it, but I, I'm, I'm not overly comfortable with how they've been covering his game and what's going on there. Their midfield, look, I think, um, you know, West Coast on paper, their midfield is good it's very good like these players on paper yo kelly two gaff on paper on on paper gaffy's past on paper on paper on paper paper. write his name down he's in the top five most games played for the west coast eagles on paper on paper just wait till i wait till i tell you about how they're all playing then you can put him jimby harley reed like that's a good midfield on paper is it not if I'm comparing it to some of the better midfields in the yeah, AFL... Oliver, Petrarca, Bonds and Pally. Yeah. Okay, give me the number of A-listers in the Eagles midfield. I'm talking about... Yo, Yo at his best, on a- paper. At his best. Gaff at his best. Kelly at his best. Just wait. All these blokes on, the, out there on, their, on their best day, right? But we have not, for two to three years, seen any of these players... I don't think we've seen two of them at the same time at their best. Um... We've seen Kelly. Like, Kelly, you, c- you cannot criticise Kelly's season last year. Very good. He was outstanding. He was consistent. He played every game. He, oh, he maybe maybe we won. Won the, won the best and fairest by a streak. And he deserved it. He was outstanding. That's why he was brought to the football club. But we haven't seen a midfield. We've seen midfielders <laughs> at stages. But I think that's been a massive disappointment. And they, and they have no Ruckman now. No. And look... Your boy, Ruben, Ruben Jimby. The boy. He might be the boy. He looks uh, like an Adonis. But at Tell the, you what, at have, you had, have you had abs like that at any stage in your career? Marcus? Well, put it this way, Victoria would be looking, me, looking at me with a lot more admiration than what she does now. But <laughs> but let, let me point this out and on a footy note. And I know we like to take the piss. I want to see what Ruben Jimby turns into this year. Yeah, and it's only as a sec- footballer. It's only yeah. second year. Last year, he seemed to be a tackling machine, a nullifier. Is that his... 
Is, is that his one wood, or is he going to be a player to create and become a, an attacking weapon, or is he more a nullifier? Oh, look, th- this might just be the progression, and a natural he progression. Should be, he should be the attacker. He has the skills. You can see he's strong enough, he's hard, he's, he's quick. He's got a big kick on him. He's got a raking left foot. He needs uh, some dental work, but apart from that, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, now, make sure you get your questions in. I'm starting to get some uh, questions through. I can see some of them. Very good. Skeddy, can you get any glasses on, or...? No, I can see it just, but uh, no, I'm just happy. No, with there's it. some questions coming in. So, uh, ask to put your hand up if you. Anyway, Thanks. sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Ricard. Just yeah. to... Thank you very much. Who put that on the teleprompter? <laughs> uh, keep getting your questions in. Uh, Nicholas is uh, siphoning, them in, siphoning them in. Can you please put them where I'm on the run sheet as well? Thank you, Nicholas. Now, their forward line. I think this is the big improvement part for the West Coast Eagles. Uh, Bailey Williams, uh, as a forward, would have been a big help. But when they lose him, I think at the moment West Coast has depth, right, in their forward line. It's the only line they have depth. They have depth at key position. Darling, Allen, should have started with Allen, he's their best player. Allen, Darling, Waterman, Marrick. Right? I, think that's, I think that's depth at key position. If you added Bailey Williams to that mix, that's serious depth. You lose Bailey Williams. That's why that's a big issue. And then at small forward, I think they have depth. Jamie Cripps has been a good player for a long time. He's been one of the first pick players at West Coast for a reason. He's an effort player. He plays a role. He kicks goals. He does everything he's meant to do pretty much every week. He's consistent. You add a Noah Long in. You add a Tyler Brockman in. You have goal kickers. You have, you have Spark. Uh, Liam Ryan gets fit. And that's a forward line. But again... Half of those blokes I just mentioned are injured. Oscar Allen's having scans. Liam Ryan, we won't see him. Tyler Brockman's injured at the moment. So, uh, and Bailey Williams is, of course, in the ruck, ruck uh, position. So, I think they can improve in the forward line. Clearly, they finished bottom of the ladder. They were absolutely shit house last year. But I think they can kick more goals than they did last year. Yeah, do, they'll do have. You? Yeah, they'll have to understand that. I mean, Oscar Allen kicking in excess of fifty goals, which is you know, in modern footy, still a tough ass. So. He's going to have to do that again. Jack Darling is at the back end of his career but still demands a quality defender. I think their biggest upside is in their small forwards if they can stay in terms of adding to the goal supply. Jamie Cripps, you mentioned Tyler Brockman. Um, I think they can, and Noah Long. I'll touch on him later, but Noah Long, he didn't hit the scoreboard much last year, but he's very highly thought of, so much so that uh, Oscar Allen at the captain's call in Melbourne this week, was it this week, La- end of last week, whenever it was, he said... Uh, and whether he was half tongue-in-cheek, but I don't think he was. He said, in terms of a future captain, Noah Long, he mentioned as someone who could lead. So he's got high raps to the footy club. You know, it's a big ask to kick 30 or 40 goals as a small forward. Uh, only the likes of Phil Matera and, I mean, know that uh, Sonny Walters has done it from a WA perspective for, for some time. But that, that's what West Coast do. I think the small forwards to help out Darling, uh, Williams, and, of course, Allen, who is going to get the best defender and... and and it's going to be really put under the pump by the best uh, defensive uh, players in the comp. Any any players we missed out on, West Coast fans? Anyone you want to hear about? Anyone you want to throw out? Jai Cully. Jai Cully. Yeah, like it. Look, I think it's going to be difficult coming back from an ACL, to mm. be frank. Like, he's a... Uh, they've, they've got big wraps on him. He's apparently got a big tank. He's strong. He, you know, he was that number one pick in that mid-season draft when he came in. He played some games, and they... They almost played him like a um, Ruben, what they were doing with Jimby, a bit of a stopper. I think there's room for a stopper in that midfield. If, you, if your best midfield is Kelly, Yo, Jimby, Harley, Reid, there's not many stoppers there, are they? They're, they're, quite frankly, they're all front runners. So you, you need someone to do that. So if he can get himself right, I've had a few updates. Like he, he's pretty close to being back. He's been you know, running and training and... He's not a while off. Like, he's very close to playing. This is a huge generalisation, but I'm happy for someone to tell me that once you've had an ACL, a knee, Rico, I mean, I had one when I was 15. It's uh, ended a very ordinary career early. <laughs> but once you have a knee, Rico, can you name a player, in all seriousness, I'm putting this as a question, Reed Jai Cully, name a player that's come back from one, two, any Ricos and has been a better player. I might be wrong. You might be able to think straight away. Petrov has Petra- done an ACL. He's yeah. done an ACL. Good shout. Nat Fife. He did his ACL, he did didn't he? Or did he break his leg? He broke his leg, I think, yeah. But yeah, they're few and far between. That's who you could get. But there's a truck. He sits you up there. <laughs> well, well, okay, that's one. Give me, give me three others. And there's a lot of ACLs. 
Okay, great, Max Gorn. Keep him coming. Who else? Who else have we got? There's two Keep him coming. Players. Keep him coming. Who else have we got? In 30 years. That's good. Well done. That's fantastic. <laughs> two, keep going, uh, Scoey. And uh, here's a hat for you, boys. Come and get him. I'm not throwing any. I can't throw that far. I've got the weak arms. Come and Nat get him. Nat Five. Lads. Nat Five. Petrarca. Hang on. Nat, I dispute that. I don't Nat reckon Scott. Five he had an ACL. He had an ACL, he did he? He broke his leg. Yeah. Bro Oh, I reckon we give it to him. He did break his leg. Who's Maxi Gordon? There was Maxi. a double. These boys. Well, <laughs> you got to be bloody louder over there, big fella. Uh, who'd he say? Who would you say has, has come back better? Max Gorn. Ma is that Maxi Gorn and Petrarca? You blokes have been collaborating. Get stuffed. Okay, thank you. <laughs> this is brilliant. If we can keep stitching Sierra up, that'll be. <laughs> Paul Salmon. He, did, he was a gene. No, he did his in the mid-80s. He was Wasn't the, he wearing a mattress for at least five years? He was his, a, hey, he's underrating Paul Salmon as a forward. He was a premier full forward back in the 80s for Essendon, as you know. Um, and he had a bad reco going back in time. He came back as, as good as what he was before, you reckon? My point is it's, it's, it's difficult. I'm saying this with sincerity. For a player to come back and be as good, you mentioned two champions, Joy Cully's got up against him. Now, uh, this is a question. Uh, I'll, I'll say this is from... This Taj. Is from, this is from Taj. Hello, Taj. Uh, now, now, how long do you think the older Eagle players will last, Skeeter? Jack Darling, Andrew Gaff, we just spoke about them. How, how long will they ask? Last four. Hang on. You've played with both these blokes and you're asking me. I, I, I'll give you my opinion. I think Jack Darling... What does he kick? 600? At least. 600 plus? I mean, he, he is a great of that football club. He's a bit like, you go back through time with the Eagles, they've always been whipping boys. Let's name him. Let's name him. Peter Sumich, even though he was kicking goals, he was back in 91, under Mick, he had 200 shots at goal. Josh Kennedy didn't, jo didn't, I, he didn't ever become a whipping boy. Well, no, he didn't, but Fraser Gehrig did. That's another play. Anyone else from West Coast? Brett Spinks. Scotty Scott Cummings, Cummings, perhaps. Yeah, it's always those forwards. And I think in the back up, yeah, <laughs> Houston. Oh, I'm not sure he's a whipping that's boy. That's very good. Um, no, I, I, look, I think Jack's been a great player, but let's be honest, he's, what, got two years maximum left, I would have thought. I can speak to it and not sledge them personally. No. Like, you, you get over 30, 31, 32, which these boys are, and you start to move a bit slowly. You start to... Um, you spring in your step goes a little bit, and you can see it. Well, well what Why do you, you get over fifty? Then? <laughs> <laughs> see how you feel then, uh, Scoey. I, I just think, from a footy perspective, I, we won't see the best of those players ever again. And when the time comes that a younger player needs to take that spot, that's when they need to step down. So Andrew Gaff last year, right, I know that there's a lot of critical people about Andrew Gaff last year. He was one of the only players that actually played games last year. So he was the only player that played. Was, there was four blokes that played every game, and he was one of them. He was getting picked because no one else was there. Now, I know he can be critical. He looked like he was injured to me. He can be critical of his performance, but you can't be critical of him being consistent and being out there. Half of his teammates weren't. So I, I, I personally, I'm not too critical on either of them. I think they'll both finish within two years, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, and if, if not this year, this could I be think, both of their last years. Uh, exactly. I think, you know, it would be sad if Andrew Gaff's career was to find by the way he finishes in terms of <clears throat> the Eagles down the bottom and him not playing as good a footy as he would have liked and obviously going back to the, the, the piece with, with Brayshaw. But he's been a fine player. Look, I'm not sure if he'll get to 300 games. Uh, Who? Gaffey. He's what, he on 270 275, something? I think. That's, you know, touch and go. But I think we've got to remember what he has given to the club over a long period of time. I think you're right. Him and I think that, Jack well, have been outstanding. Every time I hear that, that stands for nothing. Just saying, so you know, I was marched out the door. I gave a lot to that footy club as well. So, that, mate, what, what, what do you give to the footy club? Means nothing. No, but you had pot the, 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 the Gaff and Darling are being potted mercilessly in the last 12 months. That's, that's fine. Jacko, yeah. Jacko was writing me off in my last year. Yeah, okay. I heard every bit of it. The... the, the, the the, what does the... But my point is, don't forget what was done previously. For no, but players. no one cares. The footy club doesn't care, at least. Maybe the fans do. We, I, I know the fans care, but the footy club doesn't. Now... Ooh, strong words. Hey, a little bit of chip on the shoulders going. Now, <laughs> we, heard, we heard the room before. No one really cares about the West Coast Eagles, but I want to finish with this. <laughs> we want to know how many games are they going to win. And just mind you, I asked you this question on live national TV on the weekend, so I know your answer, so don't lie. Ladder position... And I want a breakout player as well. I want someone we're going to love to watch this year. So win-loss. Win-loss. How many games are they going to win? Jeez. Okay. I said they'd like to win between six and eight. I think they'll win five games. I think they'll finish 
17th. And I think the breakout player will be Noah Long. Well done. Like is that, that okay? Is that, is that it's pretty good. It's pretty reasonable. I think they'll win. Mate, I looked at this. I looked at the fixture on the way over here on the on the flight to Bustleton on uh, beautiful Jetstar service in the middle seat um, with a seat back in my forehead uh, after a lovely six year old man chucked it back into my skull. Yeah, but hang was... on, a hostess was sitting in her lap at the time, so that's okay. Oh, it wasn't my <laughs> lap. I can tell you that right now. Uh, I, I think they. I, I don't see how they win more than two games. I can't see who they beat. More than two games. I don't know who, who are they going. Who are they going to beat? They beat the Giants last year in yeah, Perth. I, yeah, I realise that. They beat that. the Bulldogs late in the season. They were playing for finals. I think they'll be worse than they were last year. That's sorry, sir, Bulldog supporter. Uh, I think they'll be worse last than they were last year. I don't. I, think, I don't think they'll be better. Unfortunately, I, I don't see how they. I improve. can't disagree with you, but surely two games. So they'll be worse. So they won three last year. I think they'll win two this year. And if that's the case, then the coach will be gone before the end of the season. Yep. Yep. Um, Ladder position, uh, 17th. So I think North Melbourne probably lose, uh, uh, win less than them. Really? So you reckon North will win either I've, one or two games for the year? I mean, yeah, maybe. They'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll probably beat, they'll probably be a bit better than they were last year, but I don't think that they'll be much better. So it's just them, Hawthorne and West Coast at the bottom. Breakout player for mine, got to stay in the back line. Spoke about him before, Brady Hoff. I think he's going to be a really big part of that back line. Smart, clean, tough, hard, everything. You know, as West Coast backmen for West Coast players out there. Now, that's enough about West Coast. Jeez, they're going to be shit this year. Let's get on to the Frio Dockers. Let's go, right? What everyone's here for. The Bustleton Shelter Brewing. Skeeter's that finished his Chardonnay. If we get another Shelter, shelter Chardonnay shelter. out the front. It goes okay. I know you blokes love drinking it's pints not, of beer. You do understand it's not a Shelter Chardonnay. You understand that they don't make wine. Really? No, I'm just having having mix, mixing. The dope point of Victoria. Well, she usually, wants, she, she wants a Chardonnay. She's not your boss. Well, she is your boss. <laughs> really? What time are we going home, Vic? <laughs> right. Time to get into Freo. Let's get into this. Freo Dockers. Uh, right. Okay. We're going to start with a question from the crowd. It's anonymous. You didn't want to put your name to it. You didn't want a free uh, little hat or drink because uh, we're giving out free pints. Did I mention that we're giving out free pints? Now we've got some questions, don't we? I'm into wine and the Dockers. Is there a wine that pairs with disappointment? Come on. Someone's got to eye up to that. Put your... That's Thank very you, good. Someone get him a beer. Tommy, can we grab him a beer, please? Thank you very much. He's up the back in the Miami, in the Miami Hurricanes jersey, if you don't mind. Uh, Skeeter, you're the wine man. Can you pair a wine with disappointment? Well, n- not really, but, uh, you know... When uh, you've been gutted like Fremantle, I suppose you've had a, had a few hurlows over the years, so maybe a Merlot for you, sir, but uh, I, I, I sympathise. You know what? Do you sympathise? I, I do. I mean, and people not free, Docker supporters say how, how tough it's been. Bullshit. You look at teams in the competition. St Kilda, 1966, one flag. Go back to six, 2016, the Western Bulldogs slash Footscray. Where's our Western Bulldogs man? That must Jason have been... Lane, the, a new employee. Jason, Jason must have been the greatest day... The one, that's okay. They they won their so grand final first time since what fifty four. So you're saying there's Melbourne gonna... going back before Perth. The drought was enormous. And Collingwood, God bless them last year. But they'd won 1958, 1990, 2010, and then of course Geelong. What about Geelong? Four, Geelong's first last time was sixty three before so, so 07. Hundred percent. They're tough to win. They're tough to win. Have you been in the Collingwood crowd though? I have been in the Collingwood crowd. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Thomas. All I'm saying is, uh, Fremantle supporters, I understand there's disappointment. I'm a Perth man. I know exactly about losing regularly. I know about wooden spoons. But there's hope. There's Trust me, with the list they've got, with the trajectory they're going, um, don't just dismiss them in the next five years. I agree. Let's get into some positivity because I like the Freo Dockers this year a lot. A couple of their additions are exciting. Cooper Simpson, Skeeter said on the coverage on the weekend, his new favourite player. He's your man. Yeah. You I, called him. You were that fucking happy with him. You called him Connor. Well, I, I was a bit excited, but uh, pick 35, Cooper Simpson. I don't know if anyone saw the game on the weekend, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. He's, he's probably not going to be picking up 30 touches and kicking three goals initially, but he's got looks pace, good. skill. I'm not sure if he's mid or small forward, but when it comes to draft picks, I think he's going to be one little shining light. And hopefully... 
he gets some time this year. Hopefully it's not because of injuries. Hopefully it's because he's complimenting what's already there. Uh, Jeremy Sharp from the Gold Coast Suns. I think he could play a role. He could play on the wing round one. Uh, Oscar McDonald looked pretty good as well. So it leads us straight into the outs. I was really critical of the Freo Footy Club at the end of last year. I've been, I think, I hope, if you've been listening along, I've, I've been pretty fair on Freo. I've been a big Freo fan. Set call as I see it. Lots of merchandise still uh, to get away, haven't we? We do have some flag metal t-shirts <laughs> that we can sell. Uh, still in the closet somewhere. I think letting Joel Hamling walk out the door, Liam Henry walk out the door, Lockie Schultz walk out the door, uh, Nathan Wilson, Travis Collier, all these blokes that, that leave, and we had some last year and the year before, uh, I think they should be doing better to keep their list together. But in saying all of that, I also think they're doing a pretty good job at filling the gaps. I think Jeremy Sharp fills the Liam Henry gap because Liam Henry, if you remember, he played almost every game in the wing last year for you guys and he was good. I thought he had a pretty good season. Jeremy Sharp may step straight into that. Uh, Oscar McDonald may be that depth player that Joel Hamling was. Yeah, true. Absolutely. So, And, and one player that's come into the mix, he's playing tomorrow night, I think, in a practice match over there at Port Adelaide. Is uh, Pat Voss? I think he's Pat got. A Voss. We saw him in the second simulation match, which we wanted to be there right to the very end to see all of it, and uh, we were for about six hours. Uh, Pat Voss <laughs> took a couple of good marks. I was late for dinner. Um, he was. He showed a little bit as well. Now, there, if one thing the Dockers have got in terms of their forward line, and there's been a question mark about their productivity or their ability to hit the scoreboard, they have got some. If they develop some really tall weapons, I mean, Luke Jackson, I think, has had the best preseason in his time in the AFL. Josh Tracy is just dying to to burst out of his skin. He's going to explode. Jai Amos, we know his potential. There's three tools, and then you've got the small forwards that they need. Obviously, Lockie Schultz is massive, but you know, I'm bullish about their forward uh, half set up with their with their key forwards if if they get it right. Uh, it's well said. They do have a couple of injuries. Uh, very big fans of Jai Amos tonight, Skeeter. Now, we're not going to say yeah. why, but very, very big fans of him. I can tell you that right now. Uh, now, uh, he is out with a quad injury at the moment. For mine, Corky, I'm, I, I've looked heard, like a Corky. I was, down the, the other, I was just down the, the foreshore and someone whispered, Corky. Looks like, corky. smells like, feels like a Corky Which is me. basically blood in your thigh, isn't it? That's right. You got a bit of that. Uh, now, <laughs> Heath, Ch- Heath Chapman's out. Uh, he's been chronically injured, but I've played with him at Peel. I think he's going to be a very good player, so I hope they get him back soon. From Qatar? Is that where he is? He's gone to Qatar. Is that right? He's gone to Qatar. This is the new, this no, this is is the new base. This is the new medical base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us, what, what's over there? Ronaldo so, and those go over there, is that right? Messi? When are they sending us over there? That's That could be... That, we know to go. Is there a fat farm in, in Qatar? So, so I spoke to Gov. Gov went over there. Uh, Elliot Yo was with him. So they, they've re... They've, reworked Elliot Yo's running style, basically. So he's gone from a real forward runner to a, a much more upright runner to support his hamstrings, glutes, where he was having a lot of issues. Um, I believe they have a lot of specialists in one building. So instead of having going to a physio um, down in Mandra, and then you go to the weight specialist in Margaret River, and then you see your coach in Busso, you get them all in one building, you go from room to room to room. You get a you get a centralised plan, and they they do it all there. That's that's what I'm told. So so his running style's very upright now, correct? Yes. So I'm just trying. The only person I can think that has, and you'll agree with me, a running style that was just so like stiff. That, yeah, so stiff was um, Forrest Gump. Remember seeing Forrest run? <laughs> and how stiff was he? And he just kept. He had a very, very straight. Very. His spine was yeah. These uh, Chardonnays from Shelter going down beautifully. <laughs> That's very good. Yeah, very, very good. <laughs> if you are down in the Shelters, you can try an Italian Pilsner just out. Uh, nice little They're new beautiful. release. Beautiful, one of those. Yeah. yeah, correct. Thank you very much. Uh, so they've got a few injuries. I think they're okay, though. I think the injuries, most of them are TBCs. Most of them, they're coming back. Most of them are to players that aren't in their starting 18. So injuries, <clears throat> excuse me, they're not the issue with the Dockers. The issue with the Dockers are, is, and, and again, this call it how I see it, last year they had the uh, 14th ranked defence and the 13th ranked offence. They were below average side in every, every part of the football. So um, to, to improve as a footy club, um, for instance, a St Kilda, they were, they were the, one of the lowest scoring, uh, the fourth lowest scoring side in the AFL, but they had an elite defence. So they just need to get better offensively. Frio need to get better across the board. They need better attack, better better defence. So they need to get better moving the footy 
and better defending it. So that, that's why it's going to be difficult to improve. I agree, but the two aspects that I noticed last year, maybe not so specific with stats, pretty obvious. Their first quarters were crap. They started half an hour behind every other team most days, most matches. And you agree with me if you're a Frio fan. The other aspect... It's a good that, point. Yeah, they, they, were, they were poor in that area. So I think if you, if you can improve that element of your game... The other thing is, start this... I know it sounds pretty basic. Start the season well. They get beaten, but Ross Lyon gave them a coaching clinic at Marvel in round one. North got them in round two, from memory. You're chasing your tail. I know it's only two matches, but if they can beat Brisbane, which sounds tough on paper... But the grand finals are gettable. First up, I think, given a lesser preparation. And look, I should have beaten them last year. If they can get Brisbane early, if they can get away to a flyer, be ahead of the ledger, I think, I think good things can happen with Fremantle. But you, you, you've got to get things right early, Scoey. Otherwise, it, you know, I know there are cases where teams fly home, but you'd rather have points in the bank for a team like Freo. It builds confidence, momentum, and, and a really good feeling around the club. So they have Brisbane at home, North Melbourne away. Gettable. Uh, Adelaide at home. They're, they're all winnable. Carlton at home. Port yeah. Ad- no, they're all. Um, th- yeah, and then, there's and then nothing Port, Port Adelaide away. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if you win, you say five we're, games, they, they should be able to win three or five or four or five. If, if you're playing finals, you have to be doing, you have to be ahead of the ledger at some stage. And why not do it early? For, well, no. If, if they if they aren't if they are as a as a positive ledger there at the end of that, if they aren't three and two, they're two and three. If they're one and four, yeah, one. I think it's difficult to make finals. Two, it's not impossible, just difficult. Yeah. Two, um, we've had a fair bit of coverage over the coach, Justin Longmuir, who will be on back chat uh, on Monday, actually, Skeeter. We had interviewed Justin Longmuir one-on-one, which yeah. is very good. I actually did a function with him about a year ago. I know you're going to talk about it, but he's, he's taken his contractual talks out of having a manager to do it himself. And look, you don't keep coaches on because they're good blokes, but I don't reckon I've met... A nicer, there's a lot of good blokes in footy. He's one of the more down-to-earth, lovely blokes in footy. Again, win-loss ratio is all you determine footy coaches on, but he's a, he's a terrific bloke. I reckon he is. I can vouch for that, but he's in the last year of his contract. If they start one and four, yeah. he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Agreed, Freer fans, or not? So I'd love to hear some questions for Justin Longmuir that we got on Monday, or maybe right now. We've got a few free beers to hand out, Skeeter. So if you want to put your hand out, you want to put them up here. Love to hear some questions. Justin Longmuir, what are we thoughts? What are our thoughts, Freo fans? Tell me, McFella. Yes. Yeah, you're talking about um, the offense and not the ranked turn. Yes. Is, is that because last year they were talking where people were offensive? They fucking. I feel like we were quite a good defensive side. Yes. Well, I mean, you, you're kind of correct. So for listening along on the podcast, um, you know, what, what happened to Freo's side because they were a really good defensive side the year before and then they went to just a really average side. Looking at it, one, they got really stuck offensively deep. They, they couldn't transition the footy. I think the 2022 Freo Dockers, their style of play was win the ball back, intercept footy, take a bit of time getting outside the 50 and then they would hit an inside ball and yeah. they were just gone, like running... Maybe. Maybe. But Ma- but, maybe. But you're right. The, Fifey, the, maybe. The Dockers last year calling the games at, at, uh, at Optus. Down Stagnant. The, down the line. Down yep. the, and it was just, you could see they were going nowhere in a hurry. Uh, Taj, you got a question down here or a statement? Hello, Taj. So, they focus so much down the forward line. We, we didn't see much down the back line. Like, everyone was moving forward fairly quickly. Moving side to the back. Yeah, well, so I, I think um, like their ball movement. So if I compare 22, 2022 to 2023, it was that build up, build up and then go. And they took that kick on and they were gone. And we saw Freddie and boys like that just absolutely killing it and spreading on teams. And they should have been top four. They should have finished top four 2022. Yeah, well, Freddie and Amos did pretty well in the forward line. Correct. So then 2023, 2023, they turned the footy over. They couldn't defend behind it. And... I do say this, and it's pretty much the same across the competition. It's a turnover turnover game. So if you can't score off turnover one way offensively, you can't win games. And if you can't defend against the turnover the other way, you can't win games either. So they couldn't do either. So overall, to improve, you need to improve both of those sides of the game. And they've got a lot of work to do. But in saying that, Skeeter, I, 
I'm bullish on the Freo Dockers. I think they've got a great back line. They've lost Hamling, yes, but Oscar McDonald, I think, comes in as depth, and that's okay. They cover that. Ryan, Pierce, Chapman, Clark, Cox, Brandon Walker developed into a good player last year. I think their back line's one of the best in the comp. I said that last year, and they got absolutely ripped apart in the back line. Stitched up, goals kicked everywhere. <laughs> I think they have a very, very good back line, and I'm not sure what happened last year, but they've got a good back line. No, I agree. And, like, I think you make all good points. Just going back to Fremantle in 20... Two, what are they? They finished essentially top four, and all good teams get scouted really well. And that's you know, it'll be Collingwood this year, it'll be Brisbane. It, it, opposition clubs put a lot of time into to what others are doing well, and, and because Fremantle did such good things in 2022, Ross Lyon, for instance, in round one, played them to a break and just carved them up. So, yeah, you have to evolve, have to change. I've got no questions with Freo's back line. I think their forward line's got a lot of promise. I still think they're a little short in the midfield. I, I think short of what? Well, That's it, their strongest line. No, no, I'm talking about depth. I'm talking about five, Brayshaw, Sarong. Are you, you, you're three... Three, Matt Johnson's Matt coming Johnson. through. Yeah, he's not an a, a, A-lister yet, but I think to be a... You don't need five to be a, A-listers in there. Oh, no, but you need depth of midfield. Andrew Brayshaw is one of the set, best players in the comp. No, you're not Nat moving. Fife's a double brown, though, medalist. Caleb Sarong, there's three A-listers. So, so off the back of that, how many... How many quality midfielders, I'm not saying A-listers necessarily, how many A-listers did Collingwood have they could roll through the middle last year? Well, more than Fremantle, I can, I can tell you that. They did. They had more than... They had more. Three. Say, three. Three. Nick Dacos. Dacos. Scott Penbury. Jordan Ngoi. Chris. Chris was Chris there. is a... Oh, come on. Anyway. A-lister midfielder. I, I think their midfield has to get greater depth. I'm not saying their top end's not good, but I think they need greater depth in the midfield. Put it this way. Number 17... Who's that? Brody. <laughs> Will Brody? Will Brody. He needs to find a place in that midfield. I still think they're one or two players short of that area. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, they got dominated. They got dominated in the midfield. Yeah. Yeah, completely agree. So... For listening along, um, centre bounces dominated at centre bounces for our last year clearance. You lose the clearance game, you lose the uh, uh, field position. It's it's it, honestly, it's a really simple game. Every coach in the AFL right now is trying to win centre clearance, get field position, defend behind it. If they can't score, they want to turn the ball over and get it back in there. That that's li- literally 18 clubs right now. It's just who can do it better. So Collingwood last year. They, they defended brilliantly in, in clutch situations where it was a one-on-one contest and they won the one-on-one contest. It's not, a, it's not a complex game. Win the contest, win the turnover battle, kick goals, win games. And Freo couldn't do that last year. So... So I think that well, I think that five takes a bit of pressure off. I think that five back in the midfield... Helps, definitely. It's a huge story. Yeah, it is. And, and what we saw... Small sample size. It's not about what he can do because we know what he can do. It's about playing 18 to 20 games as opposed to 10 and being injured. And my point is, if they don't have a Nat Fife out there, suddenly so much hangs on what Sarong and Brayshaw. Johnson is still a, a kid coming through. I just think they need some more help in the midfield, as you talk about, just to give them depth. Not saying that they haven't got some quality there. They need to get a, another two or three players. I think to be a premiership contender, to be in that... Hayden, Hayden Young. Young. We forgot about Hayden Young, A-lister. I don't know how yeah. many more A-listers have they got in there. Is Sarong, he, Brayshaw, is he an now, is he? Fife, Young. Is Young an A-lister? Yes. Matt Johnson, Will Brody. Oh, just full of A-listers. <laughs> now, I think their biggest improvement, though, this year is going to come from their forward line. Like the West Coast Eagles, our boy Jai Amos, our man Jai, Jai Amos. We like him, yes. 41 goals, 17 he kicked last year. I think he kicks over 50 goals this year. I think he... Uh, brings up the... Do you get to raise your bat in cricket for I 50? I don't think he needs to uh, kick to 50. I don't, if he kicks 40 again, and, and given that he's going to hope, have hopefully support from other talls and other smalls, I think 40 as your base and, and as your... You know, anything between 40 and 50 in modern day footy, I think is a massive tick. I think he kicks 50. Thank you, Skeeter. Uh, Tracy kicked 15 last year, 15 goals, 6. I think he kicks at least 30 goals. I think he has a big, big year this year. He's a blow-up player for mine this year. And Luke Jackson as a standalone forward, maybe chopping every now in the ruck. He kicked 22 goals last year. I think he kicks 30 as well. So 
There's your goals uh, made up from Schultz. So Schultz kicked 33 last year. How do you how do you replace uh, Lockie Schultz? My boy, Tom Emmett. Tom Emmett, Josh Emmett, Matt Emmett. If you're watching the coverage, you know what I'm talking about. I missed his name three times. Tom Emmett. I reckon he's better than Lockie Schultz. I reckon he's Freo fans, Lockie Schultz. The effort, the chases, the tackles, the hardness. But he's, I think he could be better. Next time we'll see him will be in round one, by the way, because he's not playing tomorrow night. I think he's out with illness, uh, but he's not playing. But we've seen enough. And you, you made a good call. Uh, last year, you got a bit of a sample of what he could do. But I think in the first half of that game against uh, West Coast, you thought, hello, this is a, a guy that does all of those those Lockie Schultz type things. So no, it's a good shout out. Make sure you're getting a beer into you. If you like a beer, put your hand up. We'll get some beers out to you. Um, we're gonna get to some crowd questions very shortly. Uh, can we get some over the Amos family over here? They'd like some, uh, Taj would like a 10 beers. I played on Matty Tabiner. So Matt Tabiner, great question. I found him really difficult to play on. Uh, f- f- is he weird? It's a great question. Well, I've- Great question. I've been told... There he goes. Tell us, Skeeter. No, no, I've been told by... I did something with Luke Jackson, who's... Um, a teammate of teammate, Matt Tabiner. Yes. But also uh, Darcy the Ruckman, Sean Darcy, that, yes, he's genuinely weird. Um, a strong, Sorry, what does a, this have to do with... No, you, you can ask a question. Is he weird? And so I... But he also said... You're he's, weird. He's all, You're weird too. Uh, that he's a very smart cat, but he's also, from a footy sense... You can just see, and Scully might be able to player. answer this... When he is on and he's marking and he's look like he looks like a real confidence player with his body language. When he's not, conversely, he looks a very fragile individual. Is that is that roughly? I think so. Re- yeah. I think when he's on, he's really difficult, and then he's inconsistent with how he plays, and and he can you can get on top of him with physicality. But that's pretty much every forward in the history of the world. Skeeter, you and I have babbled on a lot. Fremantle wins. How many wins? I want your ladder position, and I want your breakout player. I've got two breakouts. So you want me to go first? You can go first. Yeah, I'll let you because you've you've always you've, wrong. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're always very. Uh, you, you set the bar high for a team you think is going to go well. Bear in mind, just I I think I think Fremantle can be in the the bottom part of the eight. I think they can be from fifth to eighth. I I I, I, I don't you know. Could I? Have, you want me to be more specific? I think. No, I, I think I think they'll be sixth. I think they'll finish sixth this year. I think they'll improve significantly. I think the biggest improvement will be the attack. I think they'll attack better. I think their midfield's better. I think their forward line's better. I think their, their defence will be better because they'll be attacking better. So I think they'll finish sixth. Uh, uh, they'll win. They'll have to win 13, 14. Fi- 14, 15 games to do that, like 14 games. So I think they do that. I think they win most of their home games and then they knock some people off it, uh, uh, away. And I think the breakout players, my man Tom Emmett and my man Josh Tracy and Jay Amos is going to have a very good year as well. Well summed up, Scully. Uh, I've got them in the eight as well, but you know, it's easy over here to see all the, you know, the positives about the two clubs or the negatives. I think they will improve enough to make the eight. Uh, I think other clubs will improve as well, but I think they can finish seventh with 13 wins. Right. And win a final, importantly. That's, you know, I think that keeps... For our fans, can you win a final? Of, of course they can. An away final, of course. <laughs> you have to win an away final. Uh, my <laughs> Someone get this man a beer. That's yeah. a great comment. He's up and about. So he's seventh. So who are you knocking off away from home? Anyone. Doesn't matter who you're playing. And then you're playing away again and you're losing. Hang on a sec. You're finishing six. You're playing as well, you dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> it's a home final in six, you dickhead. Is that right? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm an idiot. Anyway, skate up. I did match four, by the way. Uh, but anyway, we've both got on bottom half of the eight. My breakout players, I'm going to stick with my young man, Cooper Simpson, to, uh, to play some really good footy. And uh, Joe Amos to do uh, some wonderful work for his family down here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we would usually have a little sting and a little break, but we're going to get straight into it. We're up to the questions part of this show. Uh, we'd love to hear your questions. I have... A document with questions on it so thank you for sending those in we're going to get through some of those as we're going happy to have them through if you want to put your hand up uh as to who it was if it is anonymous we'll get you a beer out skeeter can start throwing some um, hats out as well if you want to skate how's that chardonnay going superb very nice just uh 
going down beautifully, very smooth. Who is the most underrated player heading into the 2024 season, in your opinion, Mark Reddings? <laughs> That's what it says. Well, maybe we could do it collaboratively on this basis. It doesn't say Mark Reddings. Given that I haven't yet, yeah, given that I haven't given any thought, in fact, I've never given any thought. Um, <laughs> what do you think about, Ken? Uh, <laughs> the punt. Underrated player. Um, a player that might emerge underrated. Uh, Given that you have written off the entire Fremantle midfield... No, no. Well, OK, we're talking Fremantle West Coast. Why not? Well, Will Brody. He, he's, he played 24 games or 24 games two years ago, played four or five last year. He, he needs to obviously work on his defensive side of his game, but he can be, hopefully, get back to something like he was. So in terms of Fremantle, that's is, probably not is, a bad option. Is Aaron, Nor- is Aaron Norton underrated? No. Is he... Is he underrated? He just signed a te- eight-year deal. I'm not asking by the Western Bulldogs list management department. It, like, do you guys think Aaron Norton's at top five forward in the AFL? Are we playing so I think he's a top five, so that would make him underrated. I, I think he could be absolutely anything Aaron Norton. So that's mine. Underrated, okay, fair enough. Well, he's not, but he could be. <laughs> not yet. Now, uh... uh Jason Lane, uh, the new employee at Shelter. Welcome, Jason. Busso boy, can Joe Amos kick 50 goals this year? Yes, he can, as I said. Very good, very good. Uh, now, I'm, I'm working through these. I hope these are all good, Nicholas, because I'm working through these as we go. Scoey, a shout-out. About two years ago at a site visit, we had a can and a chat about life. You wrote a note to my sick dad. P.S. He's much better. Are you Jesus? <laughs> Oh, man, Drusco. Hey, I remember you, Drusco. Good man. I, I, I cannot confirm yes or no if I'm Jesus or not. <laughs> I, I hope you know I'm... Uh, I ain't laughing because I, I, someone told, you told me once that, uh, that, that upstairs at your place, uh, Alex was saying, oh, my God, when you were with her. But I don't know what that was about. So, um, <laughs> Kids, my man. Thank you very much, Skeeter. I'll tell you what. Victoria's going to take you home very soon. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, that's a hat, my man. Thank you, right, Skeeter. Can you make the distance? First choice on baller in 2024. First choice on baller in 2024. Glenn Sutton from Bustledon Bombers or Harley Reid, Skeeter? Uh, we- I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you a few things about Glenn Sutton. He's hard, he's in and at it, he's quick, he's fast, he kicks long, he's desperate. He goes back with a flight. Harley Reid's got nothing on Glenn Sutton, I can tell you that right now. Is that, a, is that okay over there, boys? Very good. <laughs> I bet you Harley doesn't ring as much piss as Glenn either, just slightly. <laughs> Very good. Skeeter. Actually, it says Skeeto. Skeeto. <laughs> yeah. What's your thoughts on Scoey? That's the question. <laughs> That's correct. Okay, yeah. Hang on, let me, what's the rest of it say about I you? Think, just is a question. Just a question. What's your thoughts on Scoey? You. That's me, um, We actually got to know each other when he was playing footy. Obviously, it was a journo. Scoey was uh, transitioning out of footy at the time. He knew the, the end of his career was coming. And, yeah, we've sort of, uh, I guess, like most media guys, we've sort of stayed in touch. And then the, the Shelter uh, podcast came up. And it's been quite good, hasn't it? Yeah, we went and, you know... Have you guys enjoyed it? We've had a great time. Yeah. It's, you know, he's, he's 20 years younger. We, 20? Uh, well, How old are you? I'm 54. Hang on, you're 34, aren't you? Yeah, I am, actually. Yeah, so... I, th- I thought you were older than that. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I was going to say you're a good bloke, you can piss off. Um, <laughs> no, lovely family. Uh, one of our daughters babysits. Uh, the, his that has been a nice actual uh, little, yeah. little side of our friendship. We've had some. Um, yeah, your boys are outstanding. I've got twin daughters who are 23, so we, uh, we're going out for a, a drink and bite to eat on Saturday night. So it's, it's nice. We obviously don't talk always about footy, but Sorry. we take the piss out of each Sorry. other. And thank you, Skeeter. That's beautiful words. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank thank you. you. So. At the back end of that that he just mumbled through was, uh, oh, we're just going to dinner on Saturday night. So before, <laughs> Skeeter was absolutely sooking up a storm. Piss no, off. He goes, oh, oh, oh we've, we've got dinner with you and Alex, yeah, which I'm really looking forward to. But um, no, actually, not- be, actually being gifted some free tickets to the Pink concert um, on the weekend. I was just wondering if we could maybe change the night on the Saturday night. We can go down to... See, Incorrect. See Pink swinging off the uh, 
uh, the, the metal ball swinging through the sky. And that's uh, that's Molly Cyrus, you dickhead. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> What's the boys' chances of a brown low? Who's asked that? Very good. Uh, you already had a hat, sir. The boys' chances of a brown low. I think Ruben Jimby should be playing on a half-back flank. I don't think he should be playing in the midfield. I love him, and I'll talk him up every day on any, all of my podcasts, wherever I speak about him, because I like him as a person, and I think he's a good man, and I think he's a good footballer. But I think he should be on a half-back flank in a good side. If he was playing at Collingwood, if he was playing at Melbourne with a good midfield, he's playing at the Bulldogs with a good midfield. I know they haven't been great, but he's playing a good side with a good midfield. He would not be playing in the midfield. So I don't know if we want him as West Coast fans playing in the midfield. I don't think that's his best position. I think he's playing there because they have no depth in that position. I just hope, given the work that he's done in his first year and what's demanded of him so early in his career, that it isn't to the detriment of him long term. Uh, just on, I don't know, we don't think he'll win the brown low, but in all not, not yet. Is he still eligible for the rising star? or because, no. because he's played too many games? Yes. Okay, so that's done. But bottom line is, he's just got to try and keep his body. And again, I'm interested to see what he becomes because I still don't quite know how the Eagles are going to use him this year. I think like a like a big running halfback flanker is what he should be, and I, and I I don't mean that as a you know fade into um, obscurity halfback flanker. I mean you know best in the comp type distributor line breaker Shannon Hearn type areas. That's what I think he should be. Uh, this is from Terry. Where can I get a Bison T-shirt from, Terry? Terry, very good, Terry. Uh, if anyone's seen our work, uh, Bison, if you. are if you like a beer and you're a bit fat like Skeeter, uh, we do have a Bison T-shirt available online. Thank you, Terry. What? Well, just, As you scull your Chardonnay. Just occasionally like to walk out of this without some sort of any right. self-esteem. Just for the, for the, Western Fist is my man. Now, <laughs> we're wrapping this up. A couple more questions. Uh, how long do you think it'll take, Mark Reddings, for the fans here, a lot of them, how long do you think it'll take for Fremantle to win a premiership from Scotty? Great question, Scotty. I think within a decade. That might sound a long time, but I a think... A decade? That meant the, the team playing right now doesn't win a premiership. Well, there'll like, be there's elements the... of that team in there. I think within a decade. It could be five years. Okay. Do you think within the next three years? Well, so I'd like you to get a bit more specific. Okay. I think within seven years. I think this group, most of this group, and they draft well, I still think they need some, some piece of the puzzle. Currently, I don't think they've got... They can't win a flag with the team they've got now, in my opinion. I think they win a flag within four years. In I, three. I think three is a bit silly. I think four is just a little bit less than silly, but it's still pretty silly. You know what? We're Do you disagree? No Put your hand, like, give me some fingers. How many fingers? They're bloody hard to win. That's all I'm saying. That, and that, I hope it is in four years or less. It's a great question. Scotty, where are you? Scotty, Scotty, Scotty. There's a couple of caps here. Yeah, Scotty, where are you? Thank you, Scotty. Great question. All right, this is going long. Here you go, Scotty. No, nah, this is going pear shape. Oh, almost. Get that to Scotty. Every AFL, uh, every, every year in the AFL, they do the sprint. Should they mix it up this year? King of the pack, but make it Mason Cox against 100 footy fans. <laughs> Who's written that one in? That's very good. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. And every footy fan wearing goggles like the big boy. Correct. <laughs> Correct. He can't see. That's suggesting that he's not playing in the grand final this year, right? Is that the... While, we're up, while we're up here and wrapping up, any more questions from the crowd? You want to yell them out? You want us to go over any players? You want to hear our thoughts and feelings? Well, you want to... There's actually a few people stay. That's really You're very surprised there's a one person here. <laughs> I'm surprised You're I'm surprised your wife's here, surely. yes. I'm surprised she is. Let's... Oh, that might even... Up the back... Oh, in all, in all, in all seriousness. Who do, you, who do you support? Who do you support, by the way? No, West Perth's been good. Um, and they won a flag a couple of years ago. And Yeah, that's that's 100%. <laughs> in all honesty... Ah, uh, ah. In all honesty, yeah, this is just belt skeet. Uh, if we could win a flag before I am buried by my wife at a cemetery, I will be a very happy Cemet man. Cemetery or in an empty block somewhere. I, before I die. And I'll I tell you what, if you're a... 
it's the same for a lot of supporters. It, it, you know, if you're 50 and you haven't seen a flag, or if you're 60 or 40, you just want to see your team win a flag. That's me. I want to see them win a flag. I, the, the only grand final I went to was 78. Peter Bazusto kicked seven, uh, seven goals. East Perth beat us by two points. We have never been back since, and it's uh, caused me some counselling issues along the way. Peter Bazusto. Why are they shit? Um, East Round, which is great. Great to see. Uh, Perth, look, I'm not going to use zones as an excuse. We've had a poor culture for a while. Um, not a lot of good players want to come there from interstate because there's no success. So it's a bit of a cycle. And whether, whether they can get out of that, I, I think the competition needs East Fremantle to win flag, which they did. I think they need every club to be competitive, which they're not. You can't afford to keep having Claremont and Subiaco winning flags every year. I mean, I just think an even competition, the AFL's able to produce that, although there's still shit teams in the AFL every year, but I think an even competition, and again, I'd love to see Perth up there. If Perth played in the grand final at Optus, there'd be 50,000. That's just my prediction. Okay, so something that I've forgotten uh, to mention, and if you're still listening, not live, you should have been here, but secondly, the TASA giveaway for the two tickets on uh, the plane to the game against... Uh, West Coast Eagles are playing Port Adelaide. Adelaide in Adelaide. So for two tickets on the plane with the players, two tickets to the game. Sitting with the Port Adelaide cheer squad. And then you can come back after a big victory from the Port Adelaide. Uh, play. We're very, very good West Coast against Port Adelaide in Adelaide. Okay. The code word is shelter. Oh. <laughs> Shameless <laughs> plug for our friends at shelter. It, if you put Shelter Chardonnay in, you can have two entries. I bet you Tommy and the boys start making Chardonnay Shelter or Sem how, how, Sab Blanc. How, where, where are they going to do that? I've got no fucking idea where they make it, but they're going to make something that sounds good with an S. Uh, guys, we've gone well over time, but we hope you've had... Have you had fun? Has it been all right? We really, we really appreciate uh, you guys coming down. Uh, a big round of applause to Shelter and everyone involved there. Big round of applause, Paul, Tom, all the crew. Got to also thank... Uh, go on. Oh, here yeah, we go. Yeah. So, so as we know, if you're listening, you're a big fan of this podcast, Skeeter loves a bit of a, well, some junk, like, a junket. No, some people like to camp. Some people like to go on caravans. I like the Hilton across the road, I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> So I just like to start. We've got a nice view of the ocean. Thank you to Tommy, uh, the, the jetty, and thank you the Hilton, the Hilton, Des. the Hilton, the, 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 Des, Desi, 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 is he here? Anyway, the Hilton, it's a good spot, and uh, in all sincerity, we've had some great hospitality. We've met a lot of people here tonight. They all love their footy. Um, most of them like the podcast, which again, I'm, I'm still trying to come to terms with. They listen to the stuff we uh, come up with, but we have fun. We like each other. We give each other a bit of stick, and uh, most importantly, love the, the feedback you guys give us and. Um, yeah, in all sincerity, let's hope we have one or both teams. We both. We hope both. We love both. Teams in WA going well. I know Eagles hate the Dockers and vice versa, but if we can get both teams going okay, footy's a lot more fun to talk about. I agree. Well said, Skeeter, right? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's the Shelter Footycast. You can follow us on Instagram, Shelter Footycast on Instagram. Skeeter, get your daughters to do that one for you because you don't know what you're doing there. <laughs> Footycast at shelterbrewing.com.au to send in your questions. Uh, Skeet will be hanging around to sign some autographs a bit later on. Um, <laughs> you are a speedy and muppet, you are. Uh, we'd love to hang around. Uh, we'll either be up here or downstairs, Tom saying. Tom saying. Is there a nightclub open tonight, by the way, anywhere in town? <laughs> <laughs> uh, to finish off, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Reddings, we'll go to the Shelter Footycast. Uh,